So let me start with this question. Um, so it says the figure below shows the lengthwise cross section of a current carrying coil. The coil carries a current of I, and uh, I guess I should highlight some of the uh, symbols that I need to use in answering. And there are N even space turns along, uh, so I guess that's N along the length. You know, I think I need to write all this down, length L of the coil. The figure shows a portion of this coil. Okay. Um, let me give you some, so uh, in the question discretion, they are already giving you some extraneous information that you don't actually need. And uh, uh, let me give you some more extraneous information that again, you don't actually need to answer this question. Um, if all we wanted were answers, I can answer part A through D in the next uh, 30 seconds and we'll be done. And, um, and there's a good chance I would be the only one who understood what's going on. So, so let me give you some additional extra information that I will reconcile with the answers that you will see. So it, this, uh, what the question is describing is a solenoid. So let me draw a solenoid field. So uh, for, a, for solenoid, so I need to use right-hand rule to figure out the direction of magnetic field. So I'm going to use the third version of right-hand rule, which if you read through the textbook carefully, in fact, in the exact section that's covering solenoids, you will hear the description of the third version of the right-hand rule. It's the one where you know the uh, direction of the uh, loop-like current, uh, what, in what direction they are flowing, and you use your right hand to curl your hand in the direction that the current is flowing and the direction of your thumb is the direction of the magnetic field in the middle of that, uh, of that loop. So I have a bunch of loops here. So, you know, this is the cross section of the loop. It's supposed to be circular, something like this um, flowing through the Look, so let me uh, use my right hand. Oh, yeah. So at the top, it's coming out of the screen. That's the way my uh, four fingers are pointing. And at the bottom, after I curl, it'll be going into the screen. Good. So the direction, when I have my right hand oriented that way, the direction of my thumb, left to right, is the direction of magnetic field. So let me draw that magnetic field. And once again, this is all extraneous. You don't actually need this, but I think it's a good thing for you to make a sense of the answers that you will get here using Ampere's law. So for a solenoid, inside the solenoid, the magnetic field looks uniform-ish. And outside the solenoid, um, so I guess this end, it's gonna kind of diverge away almost like the dipole field. And here, I guess it's coming in diverging. And for a finite solenoid, there is going to be some magnetic field out here, but it's probably close enough to zero. So, so, so that's the setup. And once again, all this is extra news information because when you're actually answering the question, what it's, uh, you know, parts A, B, C, and D, all they are asking you for is this integral here. What is the line integral of magnetic field along a closed loop? And when that's the question you are trying to answer, I hope you remember that uh, Ampere's law gives you that right away. This is the statement of Ampere's law. Ampere's law says that when you um, take the integral of the, take the line integral of magnetic field along a closed loop, then that quantity, this integral is equal to this on the right-hand side. Um, I'm gonna write it with uh, two different uh, coefficients. Um, one is the one that you see in the textbook uh, using the permeability of free space times the current enclosed. And um, for consistency with what I was doing earlier in the semester, I am going to rewrite this uh, permeability of free space in terms of Coulomb constant and speed of light for some reason. <laughs> Rewriting it that way, it'll look like a four pi times the Coulomb constant divided by C squared. 
I enclosed. Either is acceptable. If you would rather stick with a simpler version, that's fine. Um, but I think it's uh, worth highlighting this really for two reasons. To continue to highlight the connection between electricity and magnetism, because this Coulomb constant is something that had to do with electrostatics. And two, to foreshadow towards something that you are going to see in the last week of this semester, something about speed of light, apparently. Um, so when you look at this uh, equation or formula or whatever, Ampere's law, as you look at Ampere's law, I hope you see that um, you don't really need to break down or any break this down or anything. It's uh, Ampere's law gives you this integral directly, and all you are ever asked for are integrals like this. They are all even a closed loop integral, so you don't have to do any, go through any kind of additional manipulations. So really, all you need is current and closed. You just count how much current is enclosed in the loop, and that gives you your answer right away. So let me start out with the loop A, which is this loop here. So it looks like it's uh, enclosing one, two, three currents. So it's enclosing three currents. <laughs> and my answer here would be um, mu naught times three currents, three i. And I'm done. Um, there's a potentially a sign issue you have to worry about. Let me bring it up in uh, one of the other parts. But um, if you put this into the question, it'll be graded as correct. Let me show you <laughs> just to make sure that I didn't make any coding error and it all works fine. You're not times a three I, that should be it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's uh, what I mean. The question is giving you extra information because even though it's telling you these parameters of a solenoid, I'm not going to need it. I'm not going to be using it because I don't need it. Okay, so let me go on to B. Uh, it says evaluate the same quantity along path B. Okay, so with the path B, you are starting to see something that's potentially interesting. If we are just counting the wires, it encloses four wires, but you notice that these wires are not all the same. These are giving you the current that's coming out of the screen. And this is giving you the current that's going into the screen. So I hope you have some sense that this loop is enclosing net zero current. And yeah, so it's not, so when you look at the I enclosed, the I enclosed should be zero. So this should be zero. So let me just double check that answer. Yep, zero. Okay, so far so good. I think I uh, wrote this to, um, or the question also was written in a way to build it up to something. Um, so let me do path, path this C and D and uh, we'll wrap this up here. Um, so on path C, um, so that's uh, this path here. Um, so and starting from here, going all the way out here and then coming back. So I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven wires. Hmm. So I guess uh, if you are overthinking it, um, you could do it this way. You might originally think, uh, okay, so this is gonna be mu naught times seven I. And then if you are, well, maybe overthinking is not the best word here. But in any case, I, let me just highlight a mistake that someone could potentially make, which is that you notice that these wires are, the currents in these wires are going in the opposite direction from the one up here. So you might think, oh, so because it's going in the other direction, I need a minus a sign. Let me put in a minus a sign here. Then if I enter that as the answer, uh, you're going to see something that hopefully some of you are anticipating what I will get. Um, so when you put that in, it'll tell you that it's wrong. In fact, the correct answer is just plus a seven I. And you know, <laughs> if you are wondering uh, why is the sign here the same as the sign here, um, it has to do with uh, how these signs are defined and 
um, it involves, I guess it actually does involve another right-hand rule. So when we are considering current and closed, we do need some sign convention to decide what current is considered as positive and what current is considered as negative. And um, apparently so far, all the examples we have seen, they only enclose either positive current or zero current where the, whichever the convention is this to clearly add up to zero. So the convention is this, the convention has to do with the direction of the loop. It has to do with the direction of this loop. And this is the convention using the right hand rule. So, um, so it's a very similar to the third version of the right hand rule you have seen. So I make my fingers so that the fingers curl in the direction of the loop. So I see that that loop is going uh, clockwise. So I should curl my fingers so that yeah, my fingers are going clockwise. So when, when I orient my right hand that way, the direction of my thumb, so into the screen, that gives you the direction of the end hat. So we do this loop, the loop going clockwise, the direction of the end hat, the, that's the surface normal that gives the direction of area like uh, geometric quantities. The direction of end hat is into the board or into the screen. And whether the current is positive or not, is decided by comparing the direction of current with the direction of the surface normal. So when you look at the loop A above, the loop A actually went counterclockwise. So when you orient your hand so that your fingers curl in the counterclockwise direction, your thumb points out of the screen. So here the direction of end head was out of the screen. So that's why these currents were counted as positive. And here on for loop C, because of the direction of end head is into the screen, these currents are also counted as positive because it's pointing in the same direction as end head. So if all of them made the sense, then D will give you an excellent place to test it out. So I see a loop that's going counterclockwise so let me make sure I orient my hand so that my fingers curl in the counterclockwise direction and the my direction of my thumb, which is pointing out of the screen, that's the direction of the end head for the loop D. So here the current is negative. It's pointed in the opposite direction from end head. So here the answer should be finally mu naught times uh, minus 2i. And as I was saying, in terms of getting those answers, I, you know, it took me, <laughs> what, seven minutes, <laughs> but <laughs> it could have been done a lot quicker if I'm just uh, writing down the correct answer without explaining, then it could have been done a lot quicker. Now, having gotten this uh, correct answer, uh, I want to make sure that this answer makes a sense to you because while it's uh, easy enough to plug in numbers into this uh, formula and get an answer that the system considers as correct, it, um, it's much harder <laughs> to make sure that the answer that this is giving makes a sense with your world view, um, how, what, what you would intuitively think that this uh, line integral should be. So I guess, um, and because, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and in making sense of this is where you will see that, that application of right-hand rule, one that gives you the directions of currents that actually all, they are all self-consistent. They don't contradict each other. So, so let me start out with a B. I think a B is the easiest. So with the path B, this is what you see. So we know what the answer should be. The final answer should be zero. That's uh, what the integral of B dot DL along, let me write it out in these big letters. That's what the integral of B dot DL along this path uh, of the loop B should give you zero. And 
I think with this loop, I can see that every segment of this gives you a, a zero contribution to this because out here, the you know outside the solenoid, the magnetic field is approximately zero. So you should get zero B dot DL from here, the top portion of the loop. And same thing with the bottom, B dot DL should be zero. Now, in between, while you are inside the solenoid in this region, now the magnetic field is in zero, but you have to remember this is a dot product, a dot inner product of two vectors. And uh, I think I actually realized that uh, I should have done a review of that product when we when we started covering flux, electric flux, and um, I, I should have done it. I didn't do it. <laughs> um, if you do need a reminder of that product, it's uh, something covered in physics 4A, and it's uh, covered in. So I guess it's not. It's technically not our textbook, but if you look at the volume one of University Physics, it'll. Uh, you will see it in chapter two. In chapter two vectors is where they cover the, um, the things about vectors. Uh, one of that is product of vectors. And I did do a, do a review of cross product because it's uh, often <laughs> not covered sufficiently in physics 4A or even if it were, people forget it. That product, I should have covered it when we did, I should have reviewed it when we did the, uh, um, when we did the flux, but since I didn't, I'll just point you to here to review it for yourself. And what I'm gonna use is this expression for the dot product. That when you take a dot product of two vectors, that it has uh, three terms. Terms that depend on the magnitudes, magnitude of A, magnitude of B, and the term that depends on the angle between the two vectors. So when you look at this dot product here, what it should be is, uh, magnitude B, magnitude DL times cosine of the angle between them. And here, the angle between the path and the magnetic field is 90 degrees. Cosine of 90 degrees is zero. So in this portion of the loop where the magnetic field is not zero, you still don't accumulate any change to this dot product. So, so that's how the path B makes sense. It just, along the whole path, it doesn't accumulate the quantity B dot D also you get zero. Um, let me do the paths A and D to make a sense of our, the, the sign convention. So path A is, um, when you look at it in detail, it's a pretty simple. So with the path A, um, you can see that map, the contribution to B dot DL is zero for a good portion of the path. It's a zero here, 90 degrees. It's a zero here, 90 degrees. And it's a zero out here because the magnetic field is approximately zero outside. Or when it's infinite solenoid, then it's exactly zero. Now in here, so this is what you see. The direction of the path, the path is going from left to right. And the magnetic field is also going from left to right. So when you take the dot product of B dot DL, you are going to get magnet, the product of the magnitudes times cosine of zero. Cosine of zero is one. So, so the only contribution to the B dot DL along loop A is in here and that's positive. That's why the B dot DL came out to be a positive quantity for A. And you can kind of see that the same thing is true for C. So let me look at D which is the only loop that gave us a negative answer. And when you look at D, now this time without any reference to surface normals or anything, we're just imagining doing that uh, line integral, then you can see that, so, so for the path D, similar to path A, the integral is zero here, zero here, and zero here, either because the magnetic field is zero or the angle is 90 degrees. So the only place where you have non-zero contribution is it along this path, and that path is going from right to left. And the magnetic field is going from left to right. So if you wanted it to spell it out, then this is the direction of magnetic field. This is the direction of DL. The angle between them is 180 degrees. So 
put that into here, cosine of 180 will give you minus one, cosine of 180 degrees is minus one. So when you do the line integral here, you get a negative quantity. That's why answer to part D turned out to be negative. So, so that's uh, how you do make sense of the answers you get. Uh, you can get the answer, answers themselves quickly and easily enough using Ampere's law. But what I think is worth uh, spending your time, <laughs> spending about eight minutes of our time, is making sure that you understand um, one, understand what those answers mean and make sure that it's uh, consistent with everything else you know about physics. Uh, that kind of self-consistency check is something that proves useful in physics. And in fact, that is something you will begin to see this week. When you look at the uh, week, um, when, when you look at the week 30 material, this is the way I like to introduce Faraday's law. You will see the you know next set of topics. Faraday's law is introduced by by enforcing uh, consistency between something that we know about uh, magnetism, the magnetic force, and uh, or I guess motion induced voltage, and the um, and the principle of relativity that's covered in these videos that you will begin to see and. Um, so that's a question eight. Um, any follow-up questions?